ride. You guys have a good time. Yeah. 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 Yes, why I said it was worth it. Oh, really? Yeah, it was worth it. I, I, I saw a lot of people posting about how they went there and saw that and all that. It must be quite interesting. You have to tell me about it sometime. Yes. Yeah, but brother, 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 you clean, man. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to tell you. I, I had to tell you. I, it's, it's time to get started, though. Yeah, it's yeah. time to get started. Them up, you know. Oh, yeah. Praise Jesus. And you're nice home with electricity fixed. 
Amen. Water heaters fixed. I, I got a lot to be thankful oh, for. Yeah. Sure. Well, you need that. A good friend, Bill, right there. If you hear him on the CP today, I'm glad he might, got, might have got sick, but thank God he's okay. Amen. Thank God for Carol being here. Amen. Amen. We're thankful Old for that. We're glad that you got your hot water heater. Yeah, okay. Amen. Amen. This ain't 70 years you want to hot water heater. Amen. Raphael. How many of y'all appreciate the youngster this morning? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my and it, and it's time. God bless you. That's Raphael's mom back there. This is up here for the first time. And you too. We welcome you. We welcome you. Amen. Raphael, what you thankful for? Oh, man, I got a lot of work, Christ. I ain't got a lot. But I'm just grateful for my, I mean, for this year, for the rest season, I, I need to stay focused on my wrestling matches, winning, my family, the bloodline, and also I for my mother, yeah. my family, yeah. and also my, my friends at school, and uh, plus our family still, so keep that in mind, and also I'll just do it again. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He's one of the young leaders in the church. All right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. God bless you. Big Mike. Big Mike. He's the affection that we know around here. Yeah. 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 I'm thankful for... Uh, First of all, the food that the Lord has provided for us on a daily basis. Amen. 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 And I'm thankful for family. I'm thankful for friends. Yeah. Look at this house right here. Right? Amen. We're right. right. yeah. thankful for all these faces. Yes. 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 I'm thankful for fellowship. Yes. I'm thankful every day I wake up and I praise the Lord and I feel the Holy Ghost. Yes. 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 Praise yes. the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you.
follow along with. So just, you know, the words are there. You just do the best you can, okay? All right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And I just want to thank you. Amen. And I That should be a gift. Yep. 
I appreciate my, my family and all that. That's a given. But it ain't always the fact that people love God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And because and, there's people that's not saved that love their families. There's people that's not. But how many people do you really know love God and appreciate what he's called you to do? Amen. Amen. And so my priority and what I'm so thankful for is to be able to come here every service whether people show up or not. Amen. When I reach out to you, whether you respond back or not. When I when I when I uh, put things down on social media, anything that I can do to promote and propagate the gospel is 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 just for God. Amen. And whether people return that back is beside the point. What's most important is pleasing God. Amen. Amen. If your life is pleasing God, whether people return the love back, return it, whatever, that's a rebel. Amen. 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 That's what it's about. It's about Jesus. Jesus said, I always do those things that please my father. Amen. And so my number one thing is you. You. And uh, being able to, like yesterday, we was out here working. And, and, and I want to thank the brothers for their dedication. We, you know, we've been having a problem with these animals coming in here. And for the last two or three weeks, we've had people commit their time. Brother James, Brother Mick, Brother Mike, uh, Brother Steele up there coming over here laboring and giving their time and their effort to help get this done. Amen. 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 And I'm thankful for that. Amen. I'm thankful for that. Amen. Amen. That we have people and, and late and we have people here that do things. Ladies that are late, that are dedicated and committed and are doing things to help the work of the Lord. All right? Amen. And so we're thankful for all of those things. And uh, so uh, the, the, the kids, the kids are not going to be able to go up there today because we got the it's set up for Thanksgiving. You know, and because the little fellowship hall back here is not big enough for all of us. We have to be able to use the children's church, so it's nothing personal. Amen. Amen. We want the kids to be able to enjoy themselves for children's church, but we got to set the dinner up today, right? So anyway, uh, next week. Next week, and plus we got to get things ready for the children's program for Christmas. So parents, we need you to bring your children so my wife and I can work with them to get their little songs together, get their speeches together. They're going to do songs and have speeches. We're going to have a Christmas program for the children. Amen. Yes. And it's going to be wonderful. Yes. Amen. I said it's going to be wonderful. Amen. 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 And my wife and I, we're going to work with them this year. Amen. And it's going to be nice. You ready? My wife's going to say, get the thing. Yeah.
we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your presence, for being here. And uh, we're uh, counted an honor to minister the gospel. Once again, feel free to stay with us after service and have dinner. Uh, we appreciate each and every one of you that have prepared food, brought food, however it all came about. I just want to give you thanks and I want you to appreciate you. And, and, and all that we do is for the Lord. Yes. It really is. Amen. It's for the Lord. Amen. 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 But at the same time, we want to make sure that we appreciate you for whatever you put together, whatever you did uh, to help make it possible. <coughs> and uh, so we're thankful for that. And uh, so uh, we'll, we'll see how things go. And uh, uh, as to tonight, because we have service tonight at 6. We don't want people walking around in a food car. <laughs> Amen. And me, me. I'd like to minister to you this morning from, from a, a, a thought that is not that earth shattering. <clears throat> and I just would like to take one verse of scripture and I hope and pray that with God's help that we can convey this to you as God gave it to me. One of the ways that you can determine that God is involved in a message and uh, a word or however something may get to you, you'll be able to determine that it came from the heart of God. And then it left the heart of God and put it into the heart of the preacher or minister. And then it went from the minister into the heart of the believer. It's something about the word of God. Something about it. Psalm 119, we'll receive the tithes and offerings after service. So don't worry, I know the money's burning a hole in your pocket. I know you can't wait to give, right? We're having a good time. Amen. Once again, we welcome our guests. If this is your first time uh, being here, we, we welcome you. Just make sure it's not your last time. Amen. Okay? Psalm 119 and 11. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Let me read that. Matter of fact, would you stand with me to, and, as, and, 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 and so in, as an effort of reiteration, to reiterate, if you're able to, you don't have to, Brother Robert, you don't have to. I, okay. It's just one verse, right? Thy word have I hid in my heart that I what might not sin against thee. So right then and there, you have a, uh, a solution. You have a key. There's a key right there that will debunk, that will debunk any notion of people saying, I'm a sinner saved by grace. Right? You've heard that, right? Yes. And as we read, this is an Old Testament scripture. This is not even a New Testament scripture. But the word of God is so powerful. Yes. It's impactful. No matter what era you live, you're living in. Okay? Okay, one more time and then we're going to pray. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not what? Sin against thee. So the object of being saved is to quit sinning when you say if, if, if I read that correctly. Now, I'm not saying when we first get saved, we're perfect. We don't ever do anything wrong. We've never slipped up. I'm not saying that. But the object is to get better, yeah. to keep getting better, to keep growing, to keep maturing, so that you don't keep doing the same thing over and over and over, right? Once God helps you with something, then move on to the next thing, then move on to the next thing, correct? Okay, thanks, God. I mean, Sister Woods. All right. <laughs> I did that. I did that on purpose. Right? <laughs> We're having a good time. 
Amen. Brother James, would you be so kind, brother, to pray and ask God's blessing on the word of God? Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, how great thou art, Lord, Father God. And thank you for your holy word that is moved for our spirits, Lord, Father God. By your spirit, move in this place, Lord, Father God. Touch your people, Lord, Father God. May your anointing be upon the pastor, Father God. And as your anointing pours upon him, may it overflow upon us, Lord, Father God. Jesus. May we be blessed, Lord, Father God. Yes. Touch each and every one who is in this house, Lord, yes. this day, Lord, Father God. May it be for your glory. Have your way. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading of the word. Obviously, I'm preaching on a message entitled, The Word of God. Most of us, if not all of us, whether our families were practicing Christians, Catholics, Episcopalians, Lutheran, whatever the case may be, most of us, if not all of us, grew up in the house um, with the Bible, right, with the Bible. Yes. <laughs> yes. Family Bible, yes. a Bible was on the table, the Bible was on the mantle, or uh, some case, but we grew up with a Bible in the house. Yes, sir. Because even if people are not doing right, even if people are not um even if people are not practicing Christians, they know in the back of their minds that the Bible is right. Otherwise, it wouldn't be there. Amen. Amen. Otherwise, it wouldn't be there. Amen. Now, they might not obey it. They might not live it. They might not practice it. But it doesn't mean it's not right. All right? It doesn't mean that. But anyway, we are living in a day, in an age, where people just simply, uh, hello, sister, how are you? That people simply don't have regard for God's word. Let's, let's just... Let's just put that out there. Let's just be honest. Let's be, let's be for real. And then even we can say, let's be for real, for real. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. If you begin to look at the landscape, now I'm not one of these guys that get up every service and I want to bash the country and bash, bash society and all that because all is not bad. All is not lost. But we do live in a, a society well, many really do not have regard for God's word and the principles of God's word. And because of the moral decline of society, especially in the acceptance of things that the Bible does not accept or agree with, right? That's just a fact of the matter. So because of that, People are being taught. Our children are being taught. People are being taught. It's being spewed over the air. It's being spewed on social media. It's being spewed in the media. It's being spewed all over the place that uh, uh, that that you, you don't have to be that dedicated. You don't have to be that serious. Just live however you want to. Do whatever you want to. If we say it's okay, it's okay. All right? Whatever it may be. So the word of God has been, number one, minimized. Minimized. Not only has the word of God been minimized, it's been marginalized. Now you used to hear words like that for like black people and stuff, right? We've been marginalized. We've been, but God's word has to, right? The word of God has been cheapened. The word of God has been diminished. The word of God has been impugned. And the word of God has been what? Disparaged. We've been told that it's just it's outdated. The book is outdated. And, 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 and it's old beliefs and old truths and that that stuff doesn't work anymore. And uh, but it's a, it's interesting that we say that, but society is all jacked up. So how's that working for you? How's that working for you that the jails are full? How's that working for you that people are messed up on drugs and alcohol all over the place? How's that working out for you? I'm just saying, it's easy to say, well, I don't believe the Bible, I don't believe, but yet, and, and I'm 
I'm just going to do whatever I want to do. And that's fine. I don't have a problem with God telling me what to do. Amen. I've been doing this almost 40 years. I don't have a problem with God restricting me to the places that I don't need to go to. Amen. Amen. I don't have a problem with God telling me to not go outside of my marriage. Can I get a witness? I don't have a problem with God telling me to keep my emotions and my desires in check. Can I get a witness? I don't have a problem with it. And because I have endeavored to do that, it's, it's, it's allowed me and my wife to raise our children a certain way. Amen? And on and on and on. And when you obey the word of God, it'll bless your life in so many ways. It'll, it'll bless your children. It'll bless your finances. It'll bless your mind. It'll bless your job situation. I can't tell you how many times God has blessed me on my job. My son-in-law pastor is up in South Dakota. He's, he's a good man. He married my baby daughter. We used to play the piano right here. He came home the other day. He's an electrician on his regular job. And he came home, he said, he said, my boss said, did you look at your check? No. You know you got a dollar fifty raise, don't you? Man, a dollar fifty is a lot of money. Can I get a witness? But he's a Christian. He grew up in Russia, grew up in Russia, poor, came over here at the age of eight, and uh, his, his family situation wasn't the greatest and all that, and he grew up down in Florida, and uh, and, uh, and and he, was, he tells us about how, what the food situation was over there, and now when you go to their house, he's got stuff stacked up everywhere. He's like, I'm gonna make sure my family don't run out. Can I get a witness? I'm serious. I'm just saying, when you serve God, when you obey the word of God, God will bless you. God will honor that and bless you in every part of your life. Just stick with me. I'm here to proclaim. I'm here to herald the fact that the word of God is still real. It's real, folks. The word of God, Raphael, is real. Amen. Just as real as that jacket you have on. Right? It's a nice jacket. It's a nice jacket. It's just as real. The word of God is powerful. The word of God is effective. The word of God is still results oriented. Huh? You will get results. If you obey the word of God, you read the Bible, you study the Bible, and number three, I think a lot of people just read and study the Bible, but the practice part, that's a whole other story, right? Amen, brother. The purpose for reading the Bible and studying the Bible is to practice the Bible, isn't that right? Amen. It's to practice the Bible. It's to practice. So, I want to share just a few little nuggets with you, and we'll get into it. Psalm 119. Psalm 119 is considered the longest chapter in the Bible. Do you not know if you read Psalm 119, that's 176 verses. That's a lot of verses. And do you not know in only eight that the word of God is not mentioned in some form or fashion? in those verses. Did you not know that? If you read Psalm 119, verse 1 through 176, only eight verses does not mention the word of God in some form or some fashion or some way. It's spoken of. It, it, it may say in some verses that they call it judgments. It may call it testimonies. It may call it commandments. It may call it statutes. It may call it precepts or whatever, but in only eight verses out of 176, is the word of God not mentioned in some form or some fashion. That tells us that the word of 
God is a difference maker. And I promise you, if you pray for salvation, if you commit your life to God, and you start living by the Bible, God will straighten out your home. Amen? Now, you're not going to tell me that we're going to need God in the house. You're not going to tell me America needs God in the house. We need to bring God back into marriage. We need to bring God back into the family. We need to, people start, need to start bringing their children back to Sunday school, back to church. Like my mama did when we was kids. We didn't have transportation. We walked to church. Amen. Amen. I can still see it now. I'm telling you, I lived in Bankhead Court, and the church we went to, not only was the church not like this, our church we went to was a tent. Yes. My uncle passed the church in a tent. Yes. You heard me? And then, when we couldn't get a ride to church, my mom would make us bologna sandwiches, and she would put it, we would have some potatoes, we would stop at the A&P, and then there was an A&P, like on the way to church, she would stop there, get us some bread, get us some bologna, get us some potato chips, but we was going to church. Amen. I didn't see men coming in and out of the house, I didn't see all this kind of junk going on, amen, amen. amen. she was serious about church, amen. and as a child, I'm watching this. Because my dad's in prison. My dad's in prison. My oldest brother is in prison. We get ready to get married. I told him, why in the world would you get married on with the Christmas Eve? Anyway, he did marry. I thank God that he's the oldest. He went to prison at the age of 15 because of something my uncle did. Right? And, uh, and, and as a young teenager, but now he's in his 60s. He's getting ready to retire. I said, you get ready to do what? He get ready to retire. He got out of prison. He straightened his life out. Amen. Amen. He's a boss at his job at the hospital. Amen. And don't tell me what can't be done. Amen. Amen. And I make sure I tell him I love him every chance I can. I tell my big brother, I love you, man. Amen. He told me the other day, he said, I don't want anybody else to be my brother but you. Amen. 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 And, uh, and, 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 and we just, we, we would never talk like that in the years gone by. But age is something to deal with, isn't it? Yes, sir. And so if you have a situation in your family, if you got things going on in your family, you know life's too short. Life's too short. Pick the phone up, text, call, whatever you got to do, and do the Christian thing. I said and do the Christian thing. It's not worth it. I know sometimes people in the family are knuckleheads. I know sometimes people in the family keep up a bunch of mess. But you know what? It's more important to be a Christian than it is to be a part of, of Joe. It is. But anyway, the Word of God is a difference maker. Yes, it it's a life changer. And it can alter your life. The Word of God this morning, if you'll come to God, if you'll accept Him, if you'll make Him an important part of your life, He'll alter your life forever. I used to get so mad at my mom because she was so committed. I used to have to sneak and talk to girls on the phone. I did. I used to have to sneak and talk to girls on the phone. And I never, I never went out. We weren't allowed to go out on dates. We weren't allowed to go to the movies. We weren't allowed to do none of that. Amen. Yeah, but I turned out okay. Amen. I ain't, I'm not mad. But what, I'm not mad. What if somebody got pregnant? Huh? He said, oh, I want the right to be able to sneak around, really? Uh, my mom say, I'm so happy my mom saved me from a lot. I wanted to go do some stuff and go do this. She said, no, 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 and no. And she gets so mad. But one of my other friends got children and got messed up and was selling drugs and doing all that. We were going to church. Uh, we were going, and then in the summertime, I didn't get to go run around and do like every audience. We went up to the prayer meeting. We were having other stuff, doing this and doing that. My mom saved me from a lot. She saved me from a lot. But anyway, I'm going to tell you something about this book. Let me tell you something about this book. Sin will keep you from this book. And this book 
will keep you from sin. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. You have to read it, digest it, believe it, and then put it to work in your life. I'm telling you this morning. I'm declaring to you. I'm begging you this morning. Uh, get your mind on God. Get your mind on the things of God. There's so much going on out here. We're so wrapped up in the world. We're so caught up in the world. We're so twisted up with trying to keep up with, with the Kardashians and all this junk. What I care about with you. Don't have a lick of talent in the world. Right? Don't have a lick of talent. But just because they know how to run around and show off. Amen? Amen. Ain't God's will. God, it's not God's will for women to show off and walk around like prostitutes and all that. That ain't God's will. And you know it. But anyway, I read a quote one time, Brother Dave. It said, I read many books, but the Bible reads me. Uh, uh, I said I've read many books. I got several books that I'm reading now. But man, when I pick that Bible, and I begin to read it, it's like the Bible analyzes me. The Bible points things out to me. Amen. The Bible begins to amplify things in my life. It shows me things. So when I read it, I read books, but the Bible reads me. Amen. And I'm thankful for that. I want to define a word for you this morning. And uh, he said, thy word, brother Ron, have I hid in my heart. He said, thy word have I hid and he's not talking about this thing that pump blood. Your mind, your heart is really up here. Your heart is really up there in your head. Your heart is really in your soul. Your soul and your spirit are similar, but they're different. Your spirit is your intellect and your decision making and your will. Okay? Your spirit is your decision making, your intellect, and your what? Will. Your soul is your emotions. And your soul is the seat of where your heart is. And your heart is the seat of where all of your desires originate. Your, your, your feelings, your desires, and what makes you who you are reside in your heart, which is in your soul. Okay? So anyway, with your, with your spirit, with your intellect, you decide you want to do something. In your heart, you carry it out. You get that? All right, that being said, he said, thy word have I hid in my heart. What is that saying? Just like when you pray for salvation, the Bible says, for with the mouth, confession is made. And with the heart, man, what? Believe on the righteousness. You can talk about it all you want to, but if it's not in your heart, it ain't happening. Amen. Amen. That's why Jesus said, you draw nigh unto me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. We need to get God not in mental ascension. We need to get God in our heart. Because in your heart is where all of your behaviors live. It's where all of your desires. We need to get it. We need to change our desires. We need to change what's motivating us. And that's done by taking God and saying, God,
you hide things at home or you have things hid somewhere. Oh. Number one, you hide something because it has value to you. Ain't that not right? You have something because, man, this is important, this is valuable. I don't want anybody to be able to, 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 to get it. I don't want anyone to be able to mess with it. I don't want anyone to be able to use it or whatever without me knowing it. So number one, you hide something because it has what? Value. Number two, you hide it because you want to protect it. Let the kids are fine. The kids are fine. All right? They're in a situation they didn't ask to be in. All right? We got to have dinner and then not be able to go to the back today, so that's fine. No, no worries. Amen. And um, you have things because, number one, they have value. And number two, you want them to be protected so no one can steal it. No one can take it. Now, I want you to, I, I want you to take that very thing and say, man, the word of God is so important. Yes. The word of God is so valuable to me. Yes. The principles of God, the will of God, what God wants for my life, what God wants for my children, what God wants me to do as to uh, running my house and conducting myself. I gotta tuck that away. Because you got the Bible there, because you got God there, because it is hid in there. And I'm glad this morning, uh, as I want to uh, make you understand, it's more than just attending. It's more than just coming and singing some songs. It's more than coming and giving an offering and all of that. God wants, God wants you to give your heart to Him. God wants you to obey His word. God wants to change your life and make you better. The word of God, number one, protects. The word of God will protect you. Yes, sir. Thy word of God have I hid. Uh, when you hide something, it's protected. Thy word of God. 2 Samuel 22 and 31. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. Don't you know the word of the Lord is tested and proven? God's word is proven. I've proven, I've proven over almost 40 years that if, if, if we obey the word, of, my wife and I, if we obey God's word, he'll accomplish his will in our life. Uh, I've proven it. I've proven it time and time again. I've proven God. And God has answered every prayer. And sometimes he answers prayer by not answering. Did you get that? Sometimes. How many of you have ever heard of God Brooks? God Brooks country music singer. One of his most famous songs is Unanswered Prayers. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you pray for things. And, and you want, it, it's really not what you need. It's really not what's right. And, and God blesses you by not answering. Yes. Amen. Your answer is no answer. Yes. Amen. Your answer is no answer. And, and sometimes that person that you think, or sometimes that woman, or that man that you think you want to think is right for you, is not. And first of all, the, we wouldn't even be in the situation if we had to pray about it at the beginning. Hello. You've been looking at me like a cat looking through a new gate. Huh? You know how like, when you put a new gate up and you look through it? Uh, I prayed before I got married. I said I prayed before I got married. I said, God, I won't give you a wife. And I didn't put my hands on her before we got married. 
I didn't kiss her before we got married. I didn't have sex with her before I got married. I didn't. I said, God, because I'm on God now. Uh, uh, we didn't put ourselves in that type of situation. Amen. And I'm saying that in love. I'm not saying that be hurtful. I'm not saying that. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to tell you, you got to do things God's way. The word of God protects. The word of God has power. Oh, there's power in the word of God. I said there's power. Hebrews 4, 12 and 13. For the word of God is quick. Uh, pick it up and you'll find out. The word of God is quick. The word of God is powerful. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. What that means is that it cuts going in and it cuts coming back. Uh, the word of God cuts going in and then it cut. And sometimes you'll come to church and you'll hear something and it'll hit you right between the eyes and the first inclination is to get mad at me. I didn't write the book. I just preached it. I said, I don't I didn't write the book, the complaint department is upstairs. What you want me to do? Preach about what I read in the Cracker Jack book this box this morning? I don't know how people get mad at the pastor. People always get mad. Oh, they don't do this, and then when they preach the truth and tell the truth, they get mad at it. Right? I don't know what you want me to do. Quick and powerful and sharper than any what? Two-edged sword. Dividing the summit of soul and spirit. You see, the word of God will do surgery upon you. Yes. The word of God will get down in where your soul and your spirit is. The word of God will impact your mentality. The word of God will impact your decision making. The word of God will impact your desires and everything that you have going on in your life. When a person Give him a million dollars and it don't matter. You can give him a house on the hill and it won't matter. A person that loves God and, and is walking with God, it don't matter. That stuff don't matter. What matters is the fact that you and God are in a relationship. Amen. That's really all that, and that's all that matters. You, you, you can, you, I don't care what you give me. It's not going to replace God. Amen. It's not going to replace God. God is powerful this morning. And I want you to, I want to read the rest of it to you. I'm going to close here in a minute. Neither is there any creature that is not manifested in his sight. But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him. With whom we have to, in other words, there ain't a wall too thick God can see. Uh, I said in the hotel, wall too thick God can see. Uh, and a car that God can't see in. Uh, and a prison God can't see in. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, it's time to get back to the Word of God. It's time to get back to falling in love with Jesus. It's time to get back. I'll never forget Pastor Reverend Johnson preached that message here. I just keep falling in love with Jesus over and over and over again. I just keep falling in love with Jesus. Amen. 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 The word of God is powerful. And last but not least, the word of God changes life. I said, the word of God will change your life. You said, Pastor, I've had a hard time. I've had a lot of ups and downs. I've had a lot of health problems. I've had a lot of relationship problems. I've had a lot of problems with, with finances. I've had a lot of problems. You, you just go down the list. Go down the list. I don't care what you tell me you've had problems with. I don't care to what degree of difficulty you have had problems. I'm here to tell you that God can change your life. Amen. That God can fix what's wrong in your life. And you say, well, Pastor, I've got an addiction. I've got this problem. I tell you right now, if you're ready to give that thing up, God can heal you of that today. Amen. I 
believe that with all my heart. I don't care if it's cigarettes. I don't care if it's alcohol. I don't care if it's drugs. I don't care if it's perversion. I don't care what the case may be. I'm here to tell you that God's got the power to deliver you. you got to do. And you know what? The earlier, the better. I said the earlier, the better. Why wait till you get older in life? I prayed for salvation when I was 19 years old. I prayed for salvation. And I believe at the age of 20, God called me to preach. And I've been serving God and preaching ever since. And uh, I'm almost Getting, well, I'm pushing 58, I guess. Yeah, I, I need all the blessings I can get, bro. I'm 65. Yeah, I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you that God is faithful. Amen. And we watched our children grow up in God. All four. Our son is the oldest. He still calls to get advice. Our three daughters still call to get advice. Amen. 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 I'm here to tell you that if you give your life to God and commit your life to God, God will help you. Yes. God will help you. And we're not here to grow strong. But I'm here to tell you that the word of God works. Yes, it does. I said the word of God works. Amen. And he'll help you with whatever you have going on in your life. No matter how messed up it is, no matter how bad it is, no matter how intricate and difficult, it said, Pastor, my life is complicated. It can't be more complicated than being nailed to a cross. Woo. Um, Woo. Have you been nailed to a cross lately? Well, it ain't that complicated. <laughs> how about you just surrender this morning? Amen. Why don't you just surrender your life and just say, Lord, I'm coming to you. I'm coming to you. I'm, I'm, I'm submitting my life to you. I want you to bow your heads right now. I want you to bow your heads right now. As we're going to put some music on, give you an opportunity to pray and an opportunity to let God have his way in your life. And, and, and you know what? I want you to stay with me if you will. And I want you to really give your life some serious thought. Give your life some serious thought this morning. Don't, do, don't just let this be another service that goes by. Don't just let this be another message that you heard. I want you to really think about your life, think about your family, think about your home, think about your situation. Thy word, oh God, have I hid in my heart. And I want you to call out, oh God, oh God, I need you. When was the last time you used to say, God, I need you? I want you to lift your hands right where you are. God, I need you. God, I need you. Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. Don't worry about what somebody else thinks because they need God too. God, we need you. I need you. Oh, Jesus, touch my body. Touch my spirit. God, touch my finances. God, touch my spiritual condition. God, touch my outlook on life. Let God touch you this morning. Reach out to him. I want you to reach out to him right now. You know, today, it's time to come out from behind that facade that you're behind. You've been hiding. You, you built up a wall because you don't want anybody to know that you're the way you are. But God is calling you. I said, God is calling you. God is calling you. Black, white, Hispanic, Asian, whatever. God is calling you to a place. 
place of repentance to a place of dedication and commitment. Right now, if God is dealing with your heart, I want you to have the bravery. I want you to have the gumption. I want you to have the backbone to step forward and come to this old national altar. Yes, if you come to this altar, it's still going to um, get that all turned off. Thank y'all for joining us.